Hey folks, Doug Blake with Body Design University. In this video, I want to talk to you about lunges. Now, I got a question. I always get questions from students as to why I do uh, particular exercises a certain way, why I recommend a particular style of an exercise. And in this case, it's lunges. And I'm really uh, referring to a uh, number of students recently had asked me as to why I prefer rear lunges versus forward lunges. In other words, standing straight, and moving one leg back into a lunge versus stepping forward into a lunge. Now, for most people, the fo quote forward lunge is the standard lunge. I mean, that's the way I always used to do it. Never really thought about uh, doing lunges to the rear and, until, you know, a couple of years after I was training uh, for a while and uh, realized that certain certain issues were uh, coming up with my knees. And, and then I, when I was training clients, their knees and you know, their lower back and some issues that they were facing. And it kind of made sense biomechanically. I might've probably seen somebody doing it and doing the, the lunge to the rear. So, and that's what I'm going to uh, go over with you in this video. First, please make sure you give us a like thumbs up on the, um, on the video itself. Make sure you subscribe. If you haven't already subscribe, like, and then share, because again, if somebody, you know, they don't have to be a trainer, um, is interested in understanding a little bit more about how to do this exercise, um, in a way that, that I prefer. And there's a one main reason I'm going to go over with you a couple of, um, ancillary reason as well. But if you know somebody, go ahead and share the video with them just to, uh, kind of give them a heads up. Now, keep in mind, there's nothing wrong with a forward lunge as long as it's performed uh, biomechanically correct range of motion, speed, you know, eccentric, concentric uh, movement speeds, things like that. The problem with the forward lunge, if they're if you're going to call it a problem, is a potential issue with the forward lunge. So not just the forward lunge, you know, alternating feet back and forth, but fo uh, walking lunges, they all basically fall into this same uh, the same category of potential issues. And that is the, uh, the body, the torso, the pelvis area moving forward up and over the foot, ankle, feet, toes, whatever. When you uh, take a step forward, your body weight, I mean, think about it. It's pretty simple. I think pretty straightforward. Your body weight tends to go forward. So you step forward and your entire body goes forward and you have to kind of um, to, to do it correctly, you have to kind of sit your torso up, lift up your rib cage, proper biomechanics, right? So lifting up the rib cage, coming forward and holding your torso either perpendicular to the ground or slightly, even slightly behind. And anybody can do that. Absolutely nothing wrong with it, right? You step down, uh, heel, flat foot. And so there's nothing wrong, particularly wrong with the forward lunge. But here, here is why, and it answers the question, for those individuals that have asked me, well, why do I prefer a rear lunge? And it's for one main reason. It eliminates that forward movement of the torso, okay? If I step forward, then, you know, by de facto, my whole body moves forward. But if I step back, let me ask you a question. Where is my torso, hips, pelvic area? Where, where are they moving now? Well, obviously, when I step back, everything's moving backward, right? Forward lunge, my body moves forward. The tendency is to lean forward. The tendency is to go on my toes. The tendency is to drop forward, rotate forward with my shoulder girdle, right? Uh, protraction. All of those problems, issues that are related to improper biomechanics are potentially accentuated when you step forward, right? But when I go back, when I take a step backward, right? Now, where is my body leading? Where is all the weight of my torso and my pelvis? And my hips? Well, now they're moving backward. And funny enough is when I started doing it and I had my clients starting to do this, um, what I realized was that they didn't really have any of the issues that I saw with forward lunges. You just got to think more with a forward lunge. When you do a forward lunge, you got to think, okay, I'm going forward, but I got to keep my torso. I've got to keep my, well, guess what happens when you do a rear lunge? If I'm uh, leading, uh, stepping back and leading back with my left leg, for instance, my dumbbells, if I'm holding dumbbells are at my side, I will lean forward slightly, right? Because I've got to kind of flex the hip slightly, take the step back. And then guess what happens? All of my weight shifts back to that rear leg. Okay. So there's a balancing component to this. 
But as soon as my foot touches the ground, that rear leg touches the ground, I immediately, and you'll know that you'll know this when you do it yourself, you immediately go into the proper biomechanical position, or at least that's what I have found. That is the answer to the question of why, Doug, do you prefer rear lunges, meaning taking a step back versus taking a step forward in a forward lunge, okay? Remember, nothing wrong with a forward lunge, okay? It's just that I am able to sort of bypass some of those upper body positional issues that I deal with in a forward lunge by simply taking my foot and stepping backward. So when I step backward, I will immediately have my torso moving back. My rib cage automatically lives, uh, lifts up. I generally retract my shoulder girdle because the weight is moving back and my dumbbells are moving back behind me. And I'm able to sit into that or, you know, one leg sit into that proper biomechanical position. And another thing that ends up happening is that my knees track perfectly over my foot, no matter where that position is. There's nothing wrong with the knee coming over towards the toes. But what I find is that with the with your weight shifting backward, you don't have that same issue again of your body weight moving forward like you do in a forward lunge. When you go back, backward, obviously your body weight is going backward. It makes it a lot easier biomechanically to maintain proper technique and proper position. It's that simple. OK, it's that simple. I prefer rear lunges for me personally. I don't do forward lunges at all any longer. Everything I do and I do them in different ways, obviously, I'll alternate legs or I'll, you know, take a step back and do all of all on one side, 10, 12, whatever number of reps I'm doing on one side, come back up and then do all the rest without coming up very, very high. So once I move into that rear lunge position, I just knock them out. OK, any way that you uh, find appropriate with your clients when you're doing it now, I will say yes. Okay. You can't do, well, I don't recommend it. I guess you, I guess you could do walking rear lunges. Mm, I would not do that. Um, but if, I guess if you find that's appropriate, no, don't do walking rear lunges. Yes. You can't do walking lunges. Okay. And walking lunges are a great exercise. They really are. They're good, but you got to do them correctly. You get the idea. Um, so give it a try. If you've never done rear lunges before, where you take a step back, Try doing those in um, and replace that uh, couple of sets maybe from the forward lunges that you're doing. I'm going to end this with telling you lunges are just a great exercise. So definitely incorporate them into your quadricep glute training um, as well. Now, if you understood, or at least this video is helpful with those very simple points that I gave you, type the word understand uh, in the comment section. Also in the description box, if you want to uh, become a certified qualified trainer, go ahead and click on that link. Um, also uh, every Wednesday night, I gotta, gotta tell you this, we do a live study and it's, um, it's a lot of fun. It's fast, it's from six to 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. So Eastern Time, six five central, four mountain, three Pacific. So just keep that in mind if you're going to come on board with us and play Quizlet live. It's a live exam study. Again, lots of fun, very fast, happens really quick, 30 minutes. It will definitely help you um, in your studies for your um, final exams that you are getting prepped for. As always, let us know if these videos are helpful. If you have any ideas that you want to give us for content, please let us know in the comments section. We'd be more than happy uh, to go about making uh, that additional content. Have a great week. I'll talk to you next week. Bye.